Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very exponential equation. By the way, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers. And in this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting exponential equation with complex numbers. You probably know the exponential function exp, also known as exp, and e is Euler's number. So e to the z is called the exponential function. But we kind of have like a double exponentiation here. We have e to the z and then e to the that. And how nice it can get, right? And the answer is negation of e, the opposite of e, okay? So how do we solve for z? Uh, one of the things that people usually do when they see problems like this is why don't we ln both sides? Because ln is going to bring down the exponent, right? Of course, it is. So you're going to get e to the z times ln e, which is 1, by the way. So equals ln of negative e. And then, of course, you have to ln one more time because e to the z equals ln negative e requires that you do ln one more time to get the z. You ln and ln until that's kind of like ln of ln of something. And now this becomes z times ln e. Again, this is 1. z times 1 equals ln of ln of negative e. So this is the cheap solution. But if you're here for the, the good, nice solution, you got to wait till the end, okay? So does this work? Uh, sort of. It does. But what is ln of negative e? Wait a minute. Isn't ln only defined for positive numbers? Yes, when that's that's the real valued ln, but we're not talking about the real valued ln here, right? In the real world, ln 1 is 0, correct? But in the complex world, ln 1 does not always equal to 0. Actually, it is equal to 2 pi ni. And if you think about it, like, why is this happening? Because 1 is e to the power 2 pi ni, where n is an integer. And if you ln it, you're going to get that. So in other words, ln 1 in the complex world has infinitely many values, which are called the branches, right? Uh, so this is complex logarithm, and there's a way to do it uh, properly, but in this format, I think it's it's good enough. So basically, if n is 0, this is 0, but if n is not 0, then ln1 can be anything else, like ln1 could be 2 pi i, which is not 0, obviously, right? 2 pi, some, sometimes people say, oh, isn't 2 pi 0? No, 2 pi isn't equal to 0, but 2 pi radians is the same as zero radians. But when you think about the value, like what is 2 pi, like 6 point something i, so you're talking about a multiple of i, like 6 point something i. Makes sense? That's not zero, is it? No. Okay, so we've got to be careful, but this is super duper cheap, right? You just add on both sides. No, no, it's not going to be like that. We're going to do it more rigorously. You probably know that I'm not that rigorous, but a little bit maybe. So we have e to the, e to the z equals negative e. First of all, if, I don't know if you've done this problem before, e to the z equals negative e. You probably did, and I probably call that an exponent that negates, right? Because in this case, z works as negation, whatever z is, right? But this time we kind of have, and if you haven't done this problem, we should definitely do it, or we'll do it here. Are we going to do it? Uh, probably, a little bit, maybe. So here's what I like to do. I want to write the right-hand side as a power of e. Wait a minute, can you write negative e as a power of e? Absolutely. In the complex world, you can write any number as a power of e. That's the power of exponential function, uh, pun intended. So we can basically write 1 as, remember, e to the power 2 pi and i. We can write negative 1 as e to the power pi i and obviously many other forms. So there is a way to write pretty much any number. In general, any complex number w can be written as e to the power i theta, where theta is the argument. So let's say w is located here. This is theta. This is the r, which is the modulus, so on and so forth. This is real. This is imaginary. This is called the Argand plane. Welcome to the Argand plane. Okay? It's like, welcome to this country. Something like that. So, where do we go from here? We can go ahead and try to find the r and theta for this number for this, okay? How do you locate negative e? Negative e is located on the real axis because it is a real number. Of course, every real number is complex, but uh, needless to say, but some complex numbers aren't real, like i. i is not real, right? So negative e is going to appear somewhere here. And its distance from 0 is going to be e units because it's absolute value, right? And it's going to make an angle of 
pi radians. We just talked about it, right? We could express negative one like that. Just You just gotta multiply by e and you'll be done. So here's what we can do. Negative e can be written as e times, which is the r, this is r, e to the power, you need another e for e to the i theta for this. And theta would be pi, but in the general form, I'd like to express it at two pi k maybe. I could also use n, but I already used it for another example, so I'm gonna stick with k. Got it? This is my theta, the argument for a negative real number. Cool, cool. Let's go ahead and plug it in. We have e to the e to the z equals e times e to the i times pi plus two pi k. Don't you love the e's? Thanks to Euler, we have what's called Euler's number, which is amazing. This is one, nice. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, add the exponents, e to the e to the z equals e to the power one plus i times pi plus two pi k. Now notice that this turned into a complex number in standard form, like a plus b i, which is the name of this channel, by the way, right? And I have another channel called Cyber Math. If you haven't checked it out yet, please go ahead and check it out. I make algebra and number theory videos and sometimes a little geometric approach, especially particularly today's video is about a little bit of geometry. Anyways, so what do you do with that? We have e's at the base, so we can do natural logs or just totally forget about the e's. Uh, and exponent equals the exponent. Be careful about that because uh, we have a lot of e's here. And now we have the e to the z one more time. Okay, this is the challenging part because you know why? Depending on the value of k, I might get different values. For example, to keep things simple, can I? k equals zero. Suppose let's start with this because sometimes if you can't solve the problem completely, try to solve a simpler version, one plus i pi, right? k is zero. Good, so this is a complex number and I wanna be able to write it in exponential form or polar form. How do you do that? To write in polar form, I do need two things, r and theta. r is easy. Theta is a little challenging, but think about it. Pi is positive, one is positive, so we're in the first quadrant, nice. So our theta is gonna be between zero and pi over two. That's cool. That's why I wanted to keep it simple. And other cases, you can extrapolate, hopefully, whatever that means. So now, we're gonna find theta. We don't know theta though, but here's one thing we know. Tangent theta is the imaginary part divided by the real part. If you think about it this way, if z is equal to a plus bi, then tangent of argument of z is b over a. That's the formula, okay? Because of cosine and sine thingy. So in this case, that's gonna be pi over one, which is pi. Hmm. Tangent of something being pi, interesting. Because tangent pi we know, but this is different, right? It's arc tangent of pi. Oh, inverse tangent, there you go. So theta is just gonna be arc tangent of pi. Do we know arc tangent of pi? We do know tangent of pi, but we can't just do tangent pi and then arc that, no. Arc tangent kind of stays together. Don't make that mistake because sometimes people do these things. Arc tangent x divided by tangent x. Tangent x cancels out, we end up with the answer is arc. What is arc? <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, this is a joke. Don't take it seriously, don't do it, okay? Be very careful about that, okay? So this is theta. I can go ahead and plug it in now. I can write one plus i pi as, oh, I forgot to find the modulus, the absolute value. What's the modulus? Oh, that's easy. R is gonna be the square root of one squared plus pi squared. It's basically the square root of pi squared plus one. That's a number, think about 6.28 squared, which is probably 38, 40, 41. Square root of 41, it's between six and seven. So six something, see, get the idea, that's R. So now we can write this number, one plus i pi, as square root of pi squared plus one times e to the power i times theta, which is arc tan pi. Again, be careful here. Uh, it's not the same as tangent pi, it's arc tangent of pi. It's, in other words, you're looking for an angle whose tangent is pi. If I were to draw a right triangle, my angle would be here. This would be a pi and this would be like one. So we're looking for that particular angle. Does that make sense? You can make that and then kind of roughly measure it or you can use a calculator obviously, right? That wouldn't be cheating, that's okay. For our tangent something, you don't know. Okay, great. So now I'm gonna set it equal to e to the z because that's e to the z. Remember we kind of took off one of the layers and now we have this and again, you see, even with the simplifications, this can get quite complicated because it's complex, right? 
So now we're going to do the natural log again, and this is going to give us z equals ln of the square root of pi squared plus 1. And now when you ln a product, it's going to turn into a sum plus i times arc tan pi. Of course, this is the particular answer, like probably the principal value for z, but if you plug it in, it'll work. How do you do it in the general case? Don't get rid of the k, but here's one thing you need to specify. If k is less than zero, you're gonna get a negative number here. So your quadrant is gonna change. You're gonna be now in the fourth quadrant. You have to be careful with the arc tangent because let's say you have something like the arc tangent of negative one half, right? Or arc tangent of negative root three. Which angle is that gonna give you? That usually gives you an angle between zero and pi. So you kind of have to convert it by adding pi to it. You have to put it in the fourth quadrant. Make sense? So just be careful about those intricacies. Otherwise, you'll be good. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to watch CyberMath. And bye-bye.